Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So pray without season. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 Which is the right way? New Testament is a fulfillment of the old. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 17 The people of God in the Old Testament are compared to children. In the new, they have come to adulthood. Galatians 4 verse 1 to 7 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8 not to challenge anybody's claim of one religion or the other. Neither is it a, it is a defense of what I think I have. But today is an expression of my faith and how proud I am because I know scripture around it. And so today is all about Mary. Must we pray through Mary? Must we honor her? That is what people are battling with. It has become a back and forth argument. And today I am here to express my faith and my knowledge in scripture. And so as you listen to me and I talk to you directly in your eye, even as you ask me these questions. Remember, let's start from Luke chapter 11 from verse 22, rather 26 to 28. You know, Jesus was in a crowd. He was teaching them. And the people were so touched. And one person out of the crowd said, Blessed is the woman that gave birth to you and the breast that you suckled. Then immediately Jesus said, No, no, no. Blessed rather, look at the word, Blessed rather is the, the one who hears the word of God and keep it. So was Jesus ignoring his mother? No, he wasn't. So go with me to Luke chapter 2 verse 19, where the Bible says, And Mary treasured or kept all these things in her heart and pondered upon them. So what do you think Jesus was trying to say? He was indirectly saying, Yes, I'm just confirming and affirming what you are saying, because blessed rather is the one who hears the word of God and keep it. And it is only in Luke chapter 2 verse 19 that you find that Mary heard the word of God and kept it, he treasured it in her heart. Do you understand me? Yeah. So that is what I'm talking about. Blessed brother is the one who hears the word of God and keep it. So if you are a Catholic or you are not and you express your faith, blessed are you, blessed are you among women, you are not out of place because you are just affirming what Jesus says. But let us look at the, the, the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, in the Old Testament, the, the Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of God's presence. It wasn't God, but it was His presence among the Israelites. And so in the Old Testament, if you read with me Exodus chapter 40, from verse 34 onwards, the Bible says, And the ark was overshadowed by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the glory cloud, the Shekinah, came over it. That was how the presence of God was manifested in the ark of the covenant, in the Old Testament. Has God changed? No. If God has not changed, 
Then what happens in the New Testament? Go with me to Luke chapter 1 from verse 35 onwards. And the Bible says, And the Virgin Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, and in her womb became the dwelling of the whole day and of Jesus. And Jesus is the Son of God, and He is God. So He says, And the angel told Mary that the, the, the shadow of the Holy Spirit will come over you. And that is why what you will bear will be the Son of God. So, can't you see the difference? It's so clear that the presence of God was in the tabernacle and the sign was a cloud around the tabernacle, around the covenant box. And Mary was also having the same shadow, the same cloud, because she is the new covenant box in the New Testament. I guess by now you are following what I'm talking about. Let's see. Both. Let's see what was in both the covenant box and Mary. So if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 25, it tells you that the Ark of the Covenant had the tablets, the Word of God, inscribed on stone, and it was placed in it. And the priestly rod of Aaron was there too. You can compare this to in Hebrews chapter 9, from verse 4. But let's see the comparison. In the womb of Mary contained Jesus, the Word of God, because in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, that the Word was God, the same Word. But in verse 14, the Bible says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, where was the Word in the New Testament? It was in the covenant box. This time, not a flesh, not, not stone, but flesh, the New Covenant. You can confirm this in John chapter 6 from verse 24. John chapter 6 from verse 41, I should say, that the womb of Mary contained the pre-born Jesus, the Word of God made flesh. And why? The manna. If the manna was in the Old Testament, he said the Word was made flesh. So the same manna, he says, I am the bread of life. I am the manner of life. So it was in Mary as well. It's as clear as that. Let's see again. Both traveled to the hill country of Judah. Go with me to 2 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 11, where we realize that the Ark of the Covenant traveled all the way to the, camp, the hill country of Judah to rest in the house of Obed Edom. But if you read Luke chapter 1, verse 39, what do we see? And the Blessed Virgin Mary traveled all the way to the hill country of Judah. So what are we talking about? If the, the Ark of the Covenant traveled all the way to the hill country of Judah, and Mary traveled all the way to the hill country of Judah, what are we not talking about? Why can't I even honor the Blessed Virgin Mary if we could honor the Ark of the Covenant and saw it as sacred and saw it as a sign of the times? Then Mary is a sign of our times. Let's go again that after the travel, you know, something spectacular happened. You know, let us read 2 Samuel chapter 6 from verse 14 to verse 16 where the Bible says, and dressed as a priest, King David danced and lived when the, when, when the Ark of the Covenant approached. So the approach of the, the Covenant led the king to dance. But if you read Luke chapter 1, verse 41, the Bible says, And when Mary reached the house of Elizabeth and greeted her, John the Baptist left in her womb for joy. There was a dance that appeared. There was a dance that faced, and there was a dance that approached Mary's approach. So, are we not talking about the same thing? Looking at the Old Testament and looking at the New Testament where there is a dance approaching when the covenant box was coming. 
and there was a dancer that was approaching when Mary was coming. Can't you see the difference? Well, let's go to another point. Now, there was a shout of joy and a shout for joy. If you want to, read with me to 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 15. And the Bible says, And David shouted for joy at the presence of the ark. And look at Luke chapter 1, verse 42. And Elizabeth exclaimed aloud with joy at the presence of the coming of Mary. Can't you see the difference? It is so clear. So I don't even see why people want to argue about that. This is our faith. This is how deep Scripture supports our honoring of Mary and bring through her. Because in the Old Testament, the presence of the Ark of the Covenant was the presence of God. And carrying it along, there was victory. Do you want more evidence? Well, let us go to the next point. And the next point tells us, he says, both felt unqualified. So David in 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 9 said, how, who am I? How come the ark of God should come into my presence? Because David could see the ark of the covenant as a great sign of God and David felt unqualified. How can the ark of God come to me? Check with me Luke chapter 1 verse 43. And Elizabeth said, How does it happen that the mother of my Lord should come to me? So Elizabeth also felt unqualified because he could see the new Ark of the Covenant coming to her in the hill country of Judah. So what are we talking about? This is our faith. This is what we are talking about, dear friends. Pick up your new covenant box, pick up your Mary, pick up your rosary. It is not out of the text of the scripture. It is not unchristian because the Old Testament and the New Testament are one and the New Testament is a fulfillment, the greater form of the Old Testament. Do you still want more? Let us go to the next point. And the next point was that, you know, if you read Second Samuel, Chapter 6 from verse 11 onwards, the Bible says, And the ark of God remained in the house of Obed and um, Obed Edom for three months. Check that part very well. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11. The ark of the covenant, which went to the hill country of Judah, remained there for three months. And if you go to Luke chapter 1 from verse 39 to verse 56, and it says, And Mary remained in the house of Elizabeth and Zachariah for three months. The same duration. That is what we are talking about. Can't you see the comparison? Can't you see that the Blessed, the, the, the blessed Virgin Mary and the Covenant Box are the same? One is the Old Testament, which is the Ark of the Covenant, and one is the New Testament, which is Blessed Virgin Mary. That's what we are talking about. Maybe you want more. Now let's go to the next step. Realize that there was a blast of trumpet that awaited both. If you read Joshua chapter 6, the Bible says in Joshua that you know the, the battle of Jericho and you know when they were they were praising and they were they, they were going around the, the building, it says and when they were blowing their horn for seven days and the whole thing collapsed. Go with me to Revelation chapter 8, verse 11. And the Bible says, And the angel blew the trumpet and announcing victory over Satan. We are no longer fighting you know, flesh and blood. We are not fighting walls of Jericho. We are fighting realities, principalities and darkness. And Revelation is telling us that the, the, the angels blew the trumpet at the fall of Satan. But what has that got to do with Mary? Let us see. Introducing Mary, therefore, as a new Ark of the Covenant, just from that particular chapter, from verse um, chapter 11, it goes to verse chapter 12, and the Bible says, And there was a great battle in heaven. And immediately after that, it continues to say that because there was a woman who 
was in labor and gave birth and the birth brought the prince of the world and that was why the angels were playing the trumpet at the fall of satan can't you see the comparison maybe let's go to another two points and i'll end my case let's see the bible says and you know when the when the covenant box was being you know crafted you know was being you know formed in Exodus chapter 25 from verse 11 and verse and, and verse, uh, verse 10 and verse 11 you know the Bible says and you shall make the ark of the covenant with acacia wood and plate it inside and outside with gold and look at this it says then the molding of gold around the top of it a molding of gold around the top of it go to Revelation chapter 12 from verse 1 and the Bible says and a great sign appeared in heaven a woman clothed with a sun with a crown of 12 stars on her head nobody's head is on is, is on the feet it's on the top can't you see the difference maybe I'll just give one more example and I'll conclude my case let's see another one you know and both returned let's see in, the, in, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 12, or if you want to, you can confer 1 Kings chapter, chapter 8 from verse 9 to verse 11. And let's see what we find there. The Bible says, And the ark returns home and ends up in Jerusalem, where God's presence and His glory is revealed in the temple. So it returned to where? Jerusalem. But if you go to Luke chapter 1, from verse 56, or Luke chapter 2, from verse 21 to 22, the Bible says, And the Virgin Mary returned to Jerusalem. And that was where she got into labor and in Bethlehem gave birth to our king. There is a return to Jerusalem in both cases. I believe by now you are following how scripture comes up because the Old Testament and the New Testament are par. But the New Testament, as the Bible says, is just a fulfillment of everything in the Old. Mary is therefore the fulfillment of the Old Covenant boss. She is a reality. She is a real covenant box, the fulfillment of Israelite's promise. I hope by now you are begin to understand. Now let's see. Let's see something in Revelation chapter 12. There is something spectacular when he says, A great sign appeared in the heavens, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head, crown of 12 stars. I've said this already, but I'm bringing it back for a serious analysis. He says, the great sign appeared in heaven. And what did they see? A woman clothed with a sun. That is chapter 12, right? Okay, so let's go back to chapter 11. And I'm going to realize that then God's temple in heaven was opened and there was the Ark of the Covenant. That is from chapter 11 of, Re uh, chapter 11 of Revelation. When the heavens were opened in chapter 11, there was the Ark of the Covenant. Then it repeats itself in chapter 12. When the heavens were opened, there was a woman clothed with a son. Is it not the same thing? Can't you see that the Bible is talking about Mary and everything is, is channeled towards her? This is my faith. This is my faith. This is why I'm proud and I'll always wear my rosary ring. And I always have my prayer of the rosary with me because I fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. The fight is real. We need the covenant box to go with us in our generation. I'll pick my covenant box this time, Mary. But it doesn't mean that Mary is my God. She is not my God. When the Israelites were carrying the covenant box, the covenant box was not a fetish. 
It wasn't their God, but it was the presence of their God. Mary is the presence of my Jesus. She is the presence of my God. The presence of the New Testament. God with us, Emmanuel. Now I leave you to think around this. And I, I believe God is with us. And I will continue healing and honoring and praying through my Mary. God bless you. Amen.